Well, well I'm, I'm grateful to be here and more grateful to see how uh, people, the students, received my artwork and took them in the way. Uh, it's not so much about uh, great art or anything, but I was trying to be expedient when I did these uh, <laughs> posters. And they were uh, started in 2012 with the when uh, there was a, uh, on the ballot there was a, to end the death penalty, to end the death penalty. And so I was doing some smaller uh, works for Emory University wanted to make a, a, a DVD of my art on on the Passion of Christ for Lent. And I, I hadn't really done anything that way, that serious. I had little sketches, so then I turned one of the sketch into a, a poster for the death penalty, a crucifixion. And then uh, again in 2016, I, I went back and reworked that, you know, to try to link, you know, something it very really, uh, iconic to the death penalty that would maybe make people more alert and awake. Uh, so in 2015, let's see, 2014, I began doing them. So it's taken five years uh, to do. Um, there's about 50 posters. I uh, know, and uh, and I, I thought the, uh, you know, I'm, well, I was already in my late 70s, now I'm 81, and so I thought, well, if I'm going to do anything of value to uh, awake and do something about the earth and about the situations that are, that are very meaningful to me, I must do them now before I can't uh, do any work like this. And because uh, I've always done it on the streets, I mean, I would walk at all at all the protests. I'd go to all the rallies and, and um, gatherings. So uh, rather than do that, I, I instead of, I started to work more on these posters. And um, I I have to find the right words. I, you know, I'd find comments or especially. Uh, things that were issues that were important to me, and then I'd link them with art, and I'd go through uh, some drawings, I'd go through artwork that no one had ever seen, it, like early works that would be from the uh, the early 40s, <laughs> 60s and 70s and 80s. And I went to school with Corita. Corita was the sister at Immaculate Heart College here in Los Angeles, and she was really prophetic uh, uh, artist, and she did artwork by, by, with lettering, and that's what I studied with her, lettering and design. It was a night class, but at, at that time I was hopeless. I was 30 years old. I, I couldn't figure out what I was going to do, and I was dyslexic. And I don't know, I tried everything, but I failed. So the fact that when she said um, trying to uh, do something that would reach people, and before that I'd never done anything that had reached anybody that, 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 would, that what I had done, no one had ever said, you've done something beautiful. But then I began in this class, and then people started to respond to it, and it made me real happy, because before that I had failed everything. So it was a matter of survival of, of my spirit. Uh, I just wanted to talk about the very beginning, I, I'm going back, I, the very beginning artwork, what he calls graffito, I, just to explain it, it's layers of wax crayon and then carving through it. And children do that in, in grade school. And that's how I taught myself to paint. Because what I studied with Corita was lettering. And I would carve alphabets out of rubber erasers and then stamp them out. And so I, I was, um, very keen about using uh, lettering, and so that was in my my uh, abilities from from the early uh, or from the late 60s. And so that's what that is. So it's just carving through wax crayon, and that's an early work. It's a series called of Noah's Ark. This is the piece that uh, Anthony talked about. And this is a photo from 1925. 
1925. All of them are gone. They're all my relatives. This was in Mexico, in Chihuahua, in the High Sierras. Uh, those who are familiar with that region, it's the northern part of Mexico, and it's part of where the Copper Canyon, the deep, it's much deeper canyon than the Grand Canyon. And uh, they're there, and so I, my mom told me the story. She'd like to tell the story of how they went on a picnic on the feast of St. John the Baptist. That's the, you know, in, in Mexico the tradition was that the waters are blessed, so if you go in the water, there's a special healing and blessing. And so they would do picnics, and, and I like the idea of the ordinary, everyday life in, with a, combined with the sacred. Uh, so this is the crayon painting, the original one, and then this one was one that we, we was turned into a um, an, an album, a record album, in 1974. 1973, when I did this painting, this man bought the painting. He was a young man, and he won. And his father had been a great, uh, well, a popular uh, musician named Ross Bagdasarian. And oh, see, I did it as a Mexican family. He was Armenian. He thought of it as an Armenian family. And so he wanted to buy the picture, and I was really grateful because, you know, to do a painting and have someone buy it, that was exciting. <laughs> and uh, so he, he uh, decided to make a, a record album for his father who had died, like a, a, memor a memorial of his music. And he wrote the song, but I don't know if any of you are dated that well. You know the song, Come On To My House? Come on to my house, to my house, going to give you everything. Uh, anyway, I, what was interesting, the um, Ross Bagdasarian also did the chipmunks. <laughs> no, but the chipmunks. By, by, what I liked most about the, the history, when I was reading the history in the album, was that he was friends with William Soroyan, the great uh, writer, uh, Armenian American writer. And so, it, he, and in fact, Ross Bagdasarian, this composer, also was in the play with uh, William Soroyan's play, The Time of Your Life, which won the uh, Pulitzer Prize. Anyway, that's an anecdote. <laughs> but, uh, I, I was doing all these uh, artworks before that on hunger, and, I, and then I had this picnic, and I thought, that, how could this fit into this idea of hunger? But what I try to do is bring it together as an idea about um, community and people gathering, and the idea that uh, there's a quote from on the top about that we could make peace if people would start to gather together and share food together that would, where people could no longer be enemies. And also, I put another quote by um, John Vanier, who just died. He was the founder of La Arche. And he uh, developed all these communities working with people that had mental disabilities and physical disabilities, living in communities with people that, were, that didn't have them, but uh, how to take care of each other. And then I, the, the, the best one is Daniel Berrigan. I have the quote from Daniel Berrigan that, um, uh, about bread and breaking bread and sharing it with people, especially that don't have bread. Uh, so, so it, it's it's a slow process. As I say, I'm a slow guy, working. Uh, so that's so it took me all these ideas to get to the poster. And uh, th these drawings, I was very keen about uh, uh, Louis Hine, who did photos during the turn of the century, the last century. And uh, he went to Ellis Island, and he would photograph people. He also went to the uh, mines and to the mills where they had child labor, and his photographs of those uh, of the working conditions for children helped change the laws that were um, uh, that, uh, to to uh, control and prevent the child labor in these split workplaces. So I had these drawings uh, probably from the uh, earth, uh, late. 70s and early 80s. And then uh, when I decided to do a poster on, um, 
immigration, I decided to take the, the, these old drawings and I started painting them. So this just shows you, uh, you know, and how things evolved from something a long time ago. Then you you add more to it, and then this is the poster. This is one of the alphabets that I carved in Karita's class. I called it the Seven Up because that's what they used to use in Seven Up on this alphabet. <laughs> And then I have a quote from Eli Wiesel, the one, the winner of the Nobel Prize about immigration. Know that you must know that no human is illegal. And then Robert Kennedy, uh, his, he was re republishing his brother's book. John Kennedy wrote a book in 1960, no, 58. It was called The Nation of Immigrants. And then uh, Robert Kennedy decided to republish that book. You know, uh, but that was the year he was murdered in 1968. But anyway, that's his quote about immigration. And so I, I started to uh, have this poster ready, and then I realized both my parents are immigrants. My mom's Mexican, my dad's Swedish. What a combination. <laughs> well, all the people say, well, don't you speak, didn't you learn Spanish when you were a kid? And I said, no, most of my parents could hardly learn, speak English, so they could, that's how I learned English, from hearing them talk to each other. <laughs> anyway, so that's a poster on immigration. And what, you know, when you keep hearing things in the, uh, you know, uh, words and stories in the news about how, you know, denigrating immigrants, so I thought I would add, this element to it, to you, or bring more, in, uh, more interest and more thoughtfulness about uh, people. And th uh, the other part, the way I used to, when I first started, was doing stories. I liked this idea of multi-frame comics. I remember uh, one of the critics uh, that was uh, when I was trying to get a gallery. They said, "Well." Uh, this is like comic books. This is not art. <laughs> anyway, it was something I enjoyed doing. I liked telling the story in multi-frame. And then when I went to Europe, I went to look at uh, all the different places where they have multi-frame. Like in the Louvre, they have the, the Egyptian tomb. They're, they had all kinds of art in churches that had multi-frame. They weren't like comic books, but they were they were in multi-frame sto telling stories. So this shows an early, um, let me see. So this shows the early drawings. And then this shows how I started uh, watercoloring them and painting them. And so you can see uh, development. And then this is the finished work, but from, uh, 1972 to 9, 2017, it took a long time to get there. <laughs> but I wanted the idea, I, I felt that it's about peace, and it's it has a humor in it, but the humor also has a, a, a lot of punchlines in, in it to make people aware of what's happening by using war as a way to uh, resolve conflict. But I've done other ones besides this one, but this was one. And I like the quote from Eisenhower that's always spoken about that every um, warship launched is uh, is taking it's a theft from people that are hungry and are not fed. And then I found another quote from Pope Francis. I try to bring Pope Francis in because I think he's uh, today one of the eloquent spokesmen when people want to hear who is speaking with more, more clarity. I think you should, it's usually the only one I can think of is Pope Francis t living today. And uh, this was one of the uh, uh, posters that I did on uh, the end of death penalty. So I went through different uh, stages. And uh, from 2000, this was uh, 2012, and then 2016, I, I, I really colored it and made it more updated. It, it had the, uh, the date and the, the proposition number. And so I used a quote from Pope Francis, and it was a, a way to kind of add a, a, more, uh, a more weight 
Oh, one interesting thing. Uh, when we first did it in 2012, uh, I, I, I thought, well, I'll do this poster, and maybe it'll inspire other artists to do it. But then, uh, no, <laughs> no one else was doing it. I, I thought, well, I'll, I'll start it, and everyone else is going to say, oh, I can do better than that than what you're doing. <laughs> and so then no one else did. So then people started ordering these posters, all these groups and churches. One uh, sister in uh, Riverside ordered 500, and she was giving them to all the deacons to use all around all the churches. And I sold, I sold them at cost. But it was exciting. And what happened is that the, usually the uh, vote is like, you know, very few people are against the death penalty and more people are for the death penalty. But because more uh, groups started to get involved and uh, using these posters, well, I shouldn't be trying to brag and say my posters help way. So it's almost like 48 to, to 50, something, some very close number, which was unprecedented. And then this year, again, it was, uh, it was very close, or not this year, 2016. But that's because the people that were for the death penalty really put a lot of money to get uh, everyone excited to push the death penalty forward. So, but they, it was still very close. So, let's see. And that's, uh, that's it. <laughs> oh, um, I, the, but they take a long time, these posters, because I'm trying to look through old artwork and say, what could be used? I, I mean, it's not like, uh, like, like inspiration. It's like taking old and then recycling it and reimagining it. What could I do with this? You know, it's like kind of, um, what kind of word would I say? Where you're over <laughs> you're, you're being too strategic. And then you're trying to, um, make a statement and so then I have to look at five words I usually find the words and then I say what can I put what kind of image would I put in this anyway so it, but it's they're not uh, usually very fast but and it, but but people like them and that's the exciting part it's not that it's so beautiful what it's more important is that it brings people uh, conscious it wouldn't be talking about these issues and for me uh, this is my chance well, I'm still going. <laughs> well, I still have gas in my tank. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, great.